Kicking off the list at number 10, Roanoke Island, North Carolina. Just off the coast of what is now North Carolina, back in August 1587, around 100 English settlers arrived to Roanoke Island. John White, governor of the new colony, had to sail back to England to grab supplies. But while he was away, a naval war broke out between England and Spain, so his commute was delayed eh, just a tad, you know. He got back three years later in 1590 with said supplies. He's like, hey, sorry I'm late, we got some uh, naval war traffic, you know how it is. Upon arrival, however, nobody was there anymore, including his wife, daughter, granddaughter, anybody. Among the 100 or so inhabitants, they all vanished. The only hint as to where they went or what even happened was the words Croatone and Crow carved into a wooden post and CRO on a tree. Now Croatone or Croatoan was the name of the Native American tribe that lived on the island as well. But after looking for evidence, theories, even archeological exploration, experts still can't figure this one out. I've actually been to this island back when I was 16, so this one really creeped me out, not gonna lie. That's why I wanted to start with this one. Number nine, the Mississippians. We'll dial back the calendar to 700 CE. Now at this point, before European colonization, the American Southeast was home to the Mississippians. Their main area was the city called called Cahokia, which is now modern day Collinsville, Illinois. It's not large either, it's just six square miles. Check out this photo of Monk's Mound, a now historic site. We look at ancient Egyptians and our jaws drop at the sight of those pyramids, plus their alignment with the stars, it's all naturally fascinating. Well, Cahokia was once home to pyramids and large wooden structures as well. We're not exactly sure what happened to this 40,000 person civilization, but experts guess famine and disease. Number eight, Katahuyuk. Another ancient city, another ancient mystery. This time we're looking at what's currently South Central Turkey. About 9,000 years ago, it looked a lot different. Katahuyuk was popping off until 7,000 years ago, but again, we have no clue what really happened. The most interesting tidbit of history here is the way that this ancient civilization built their homes. They made houses side by side, really close together, and as fitting as it is for this channel, you would say it was almost like a hive-like system. They didn't have doors, they didn't have mail slots or welcome mats. Instead, they had holes on their roofs. That's how they got in and out every day. So yeah, they would use ladders to get in and out, which I gotta say, sounds pretty exhausting. They're probably all pretty ripped. Number seven, Mayans. One of the most advanced civilizations on this list, the Maya, were somehow able to create these massive stone structures in the middle of southern Mexico jungles. Next to the Egyptian pyramids, I'd say these are almost just as popular at this point. One of the most interesting pieces of the Maya, I'm sure as we all recall, was their calendar and the way that they worked it. I mean, we made a movie about 2012. The news was talking about 2012. Literally 12 years after Y2K, we're like, what if it happens again? Like, you know, this time it seems serious. It's, it's not, it's not gonna happen. We're good for now. We're gonna probably end ourselves before a calendar or you know, a movie does. The Yucatan jungles are filled with pyramids and beautiful complex monuments lost in time, but where did the builders go and why did they leave? Well, a couple scientists analyzed rock samples around these areas and they were able to study the water levels in nearby lakes, suggesting that the reason the Mayans disappeared were not aliens, but rather they collapsed because of a drought. That checks out. Aliens are cool, you know, and the calendar stuff's cool, but nah, they're just drought. Number six, Gobekli Tepe. Just six miles from the ancient Turkey city, Yurfa, Gobekli Tepe is 100,000 years old. They are these massive stone circles created by a civilization that predates Stonehenge by 6,000 years. Yeah, it's nuts. We're convinced it's the world's oldest temple, a holy temple rather, because this area in the world, I mean, now it may not be a spectacle, but thousands of years ago, you would be able to see the horizon in every single direction. Herds of beautiful animals racing by, fields of barley and wheat, it would have looked like a temple from Legend of Zelda. Masterpiece. It was actually first discovered back in the 1960s by university anthropologists. They were doing a survey of the region, found this place, and assumed it was an ancient cemetery and then nothing more, and then continued on their merry way. Now cut to 1994, best year ever. Klaus Schmidt was doing surveys for himself, found the same site, and knew right away from the first glance that this was man-made and there was much, much more to it. Number five, Clovis. We're taking a look at some mammoth hunters for this next point. This civilization is considered the first inhabitants of the new world. Hunters would use what's called Clovis points to get their next meal. They would use chipped flint. Now they had to hunt bison, mammoths, deer, anything that had skin to use for shelter, but also clothing. In fact, this 10,000 year old civilization may have disappeared at the same time as mammoths. After all, with these historical beasts acting as both your gear and your food, the Ice Age ought to do some damage. Number four. 
Anasazi. Before the first skyscrapers were built in the 1800s, the Anasazi built massive stone buildings as well on the sides of cliffs back in the 12th century. Some of these walls, by the way, housed up to hundreds of residents. They were huge. What's now present day Massa Verde National Park was pretty intense back in those days. Scientists have uncovered some hints as to where these creative cliff builders disappeared to. Well, violence. Yeah, the thing that's still going strong today, thousands of years later, see back in the 12th century United States, long term drought led the Anasazi to violence and perhaps they just wiped each other out. Other series suggest that the Anasazi had to abandon their massive homes around the 1300s and then travel south. Either or. Number three, Easter Islanders. Back between 300 and 1200 AD, Polynesians used canoes, not carnival cruise ships, but canoes, like little canoes, and then somehow traveled all the way to Easter Island over 2,000 miles away from Chile. That feat in itself is impressive. When you start to really think about the Easter Island heads on that island, it gets even more impressive. The Easter Island Moai statues, keep in mind there were hundreds of them at one point, reached up to 32 feet high and weighed over 82 tons. It was a sight to see until the 1800s, because that's when the civilization vanished. But what happened? But well, many of these statues were destroyed during this time as well, so history doesn't really tell us much. The population was decreased drastically and the island higher ups, be it priests or chiefs, were all overthrown. Well, what happened to them may give us some ideas for the future. See, Easter Islanders cut down so many trees that before those seeds could enter the earth again, rats ate them all. These guys ran out of trees, which means they ran out of rope or the ability to make more canoes. So naturally, a civil war began, everyone was freaking out, plus starvation. Also, plus, plus, plus the arrival of Europeans in 1722, they immediately wiped out most of the remaining Easter Islanders. Then around the 1800s, waves of smallpox reduced the amount of island natives to just 100. Number two, Vikings. I'm a big Assassin's Creed fan, and when they announced Vikings as their newest installment, I was so excited. I'm a big Norse mythology fan, but what actually happened to Greenland Vikings? There's a huge mystery around them. Well, around 985 AD, Eric the Red arrived with large fleet to colonize the island, and of course was subsequently banished for manslaughter. Yeah. So now we have two colonies on Greenland, a large eastern colony and a smaller western one. Now these Vikings didn't build massive pyramids, but instead they built stone churches that still stand to this day. These Vikings were around for a few hundred years and at one point in time there were 5,000 Vikings or so. That's incredible. That's a lot of Vikings. But later on in 1721, a missionary expedition arrived and there were not 5,000 Vikings. In fact, there were zero Vikings. Archaeologists did the digging and apparently the western settlement died off around 1400 AD and just decades later the eastern settlement was well simply abandoned. And there's also a handful of family fun movies that hint at to what happened to them as well. The Ice Age. Well the small one in the 14th century but still an Ice Age nonetheless. Number one, the Indus River Valley Civilization. What's now modern Pakistan was one of the world's earliest societies. Also referred to as the Harappan Civilization or the Indus were actually quite large. We we're talking about Vikings in the thousands, but the Indus reached about 5 million. Aside from the other earliest civilizations, be it Egyptians and the Mesopotamians, they were considered the most extensive. The world's first ever dentist came from the Indus Valley, so thank you. Something way more interesting though than dentist facts is that when compared to Egyptian ancient cultures, the Indus never built any palaces or temples, meaning there were no priests or kings. But we still get to study ancient texts. Those are always fun and confusing. The Indus had a language that were slowly but surely decoding today. But even so, there's still around 250 to 500 characters that remain a mystery. Coming in at number 10, Nineveh. The Nineveh civilization was one of the oldest and most impressive civilizations of the ancient world. Located in what is now modern day Mosul in Iraq. This civilization thrived mostly under the rule of King Sennacherib from 704 BC to 681 BC. Under his leadership, Nineveh was made the capital of the Assyrian Empire. Their kingdom was massive and had a lot of impressive infrastructure like a 15 gate wall around the city as well as parks, aqueducts, canals and an 80 room palace. This place was so extravagant that some scholars today believe that the famous hanging gardens of Babylon were actually located in Nineveh and were commissioned by King Sennacherib. Other than their infrastructure, their culture was also incredibly impressive as well. Nineveh was known as a center for the development of arts, sciences and architecture and scribes and scholars from elsewhere would flock to Nineveh to further their studies. They had a library that contained over 30,000 inscribed clay tablets and one of those tablets included a story of a great flood that drowned the world except for one man who survived by building a boat and searching for dry land. Does that story sound familiar? It might since it's an early version of the story of Noah.
Noah's Ark. This version of the story though was inscribed a thousand years before it ever reached Hebrew text. Now even though this was a large and powerful civilization, all good things must come to an end and they met their end after a royal feud led to the breakup and this led to the joint forces of Persians, Babylonians and others in the area to burning Nineveh to the ground. Number 9. The Mesopotamian Civilization Next up we have the first civilization ever recorded in history. Their origins date back to as early as 500 BC in what's now Iraq, Syria and Turkey. Mesopotamia is a staple in history. It's actually the first society that developed agriculture and its name translates to between rivers or land between rivers. It was a perfect spot to domesticate animals for farming and for food. The oldest wheel ever was found in southern Mesopotamian city of Ur. They invented the wheel, cursive writing and something even more important than all, they invented beer. The oldest recipe for beer comes from Mesopotamia. Wheels, poems, beer, this sounds like the world's oldest and dare I say it, best party. Of course, aliens also come into play too when looking back at Mesopotamian culture. They had an advanced understanding of the cosmos using astronomical instruments. Now, one of these instruments was this Venus tablet of Emma Sadaka, which could predict these astronomical events. Maybe our earliest civilization made contact and now they're just trying to reach out. Can you get ghosted over a tablet? Probably. At number eight, Vinca. We're throwing it all the way back to the Neolithic period because we're talking about the Vinca civilization. Vinca is known as the oldest Neolithic civilization in Europe. These guys were establishing their own civilization in the Stone Age long before civilizations like Egypt and Mesopotamia. Though we don't know all that much about them, we do know that they had one of the earliest writing systems in the world. Researchers have discovered around 700 characters that are believed to have been their way of forming written sentences, though this is all just a theory for now since these characters have yet to be translated. The archaeological evidence that had been found from the Vinca civilization suggests that this group of people thrived in the area along the banks of the Danube River for more than a thousand years before being abandoned. No one really knows why the Vinca civilization abandoned the area or where they went, but maybe one day we will get those answers. Number seven, the Mayans. It's 2021, which means the world thankfully didn't end in 2012. But that movie was good. Kind of, not really. But the Mayan calendar did predict that on December 21st, 2012, this would be the end of us. No meteors hit and Thanos didn't snap away any of us, but that date did mark the end of their 5,125 year long count calendar. Yeah, and you thought you were a planner. These guys were crazy. One of the earliest uses of the number zero being in mathematics came from the Mayans. They were super advanced for their time, and they were also quite artistic. They drew complex hieroglyphs on long strips of paper made from fig tree bark. I can't write four sentences down on paper without my wrist hurting. I have to like slap it around for a minute. These guys are on a whole new level. These stories date all the way back to the late pre-classic period, so around 300 BCE. That is so old. The Olmecs of Mesoamerica figured out how to consume chocolate, sure, but like the art that we see etched into the stone walls around them, the Mayans made it beautiful. The Mayans would mix chocolate with water and chili peppers and honey. They would make it as a spicy drink. I'm gonna stick with the old pumpkin spice for now. I think that's the riskiest I'll go. Thanks so much though. Deb it. At number six, Mehergar. Even though Mehergar was a pretty impressive civilization, no one really knows about it because very little interest was invested in learning more about it. Mehergar was one of the oldest civilizations in the world, situated in what is now modern day Pakistan. Excavations of the site started back in the 1970s, but due to the government's lack of interest, looting and land erosion, it made it hard to learn much about this ancient settlement. From evidence that has been gathered, we do know that Mehergar had a population of around 25,000 people, and based on some of the remains recovered from this ancient civilization, there was evidence of dental surgery, which as you can imagine, isn't really something you see very often, especially at the time that this civilization existed. Other than that, many of the other secrets of the civilization are buried very deep in the earth, so it makes it much harder for researchers to uncover them. What has been found though are some pretty well preserved buildings made from brick, and even a formal cemetery. Who knows what else we might learn from this site. Number 5. Rapa Nui also referred to as the Easter Islanders, the Rapa Nui is known most famously for their Easter Island heads, the Moai, that still to this day reach up to 13 feet tall and weigh over 80 tons. Massive achievements. Now how did they build these things and also how did they move them around? Well there's of course a crazy alien theory and it's my favorite theory of all. The indigenous Rapa Nui claim that these statues once roamed the land like night at the museum but with you know less bubblegum and fun. There were once thousands of these sculptures but during the 1700s civil wars resulted in the Rapa Nui tearing them all apart. It was already an impressive feat building the Moai, but in 1914, archaeologists
archaeologists discovered they also had bodies beneath them. Just like us YouTubers, you never know underneath here. We could be seven feet tall or we could be five feet tall. You really don't know. Look at this. You have no idea. The theory that all these statues would move around seems a little bit more plausible now that we know that. At number four, Nubia. The ancient civilization of Nubia was almost like ancient Egypt adjacent until it wasn't. Nubia was located south of Egypt and Sudan, and at one point they even ruled Egypt. Nubia even had their own pyramids, and over 200 of them still remain today. The period that the Nubians ruled over Egypt was known as Egypt's 25th dynasty, or the Black Dynasty, because of the dark skin of the Nubian pharaohs, and this time was known for its stability and prosperity, with a lot of their emphasis being on arts and culture of the people. This civilization had their own written language and rich culture, and they were also very wealthy as they were situated on a literal gold. Gold mine. They continued to thrive until an Egyptian pharaoh raided Nubia and turned it into a mineral extraction outpost. Rather than Nubia rule over Egypt, the tables turned and the roles were reversed, making Nubia an underling of Egypt. Eventually, the Nubian people just assimilated into the Egyptian population and Nubia just died off over time. Number three, the Incas. Their city is currently a wonder of the modern world. Machu Picchu was built over 500 years ago. It was once known as the lost city of the Inca, and it's absolutely beautiful. It was first discovered in 1911 by archaeologist Hiram Bingham when he and a small team were originally heading out to find the ancient city of Vilcabamba, but instead they found this landmark. The stones used to build the city were even heavier than they already look. We look at Stonehenge in disbelief right now, wondering how humans were able to lift those rocks. But look at this place. These stones each weighed over 50 tons, and with Machu Picchu literally translating to old mountain, those hills certainly don't look easy to climb. I complained about doing two trips carrying groceries. My back hurts just looking at this thing. The Inca were impressive builders. The city is designed perfectly. I mean, evidently. After 500 years of earthquakes and horrible weather, it's wild that the city is still in the shape that it's in. Elongated skulls were also found on the site by archaeologists, and many believe that it's aliens thanks to pop culture, but elongated skulls were actually a sign of royalty in the Incas. It's no surprise Machu Picchu is the most visited place in Peru. You just might want to take your trail shoes when you head over there. At number two, Norte Chico Civilization. The story of the Norte Chico Civilization is fascinating, yet also shrouded in mystery. Overall, very little is known about the Norte Chico Civilization, but it is believed that this pre-Columbian society is one of the oldest known civilization in the Americas. Researchers know more about this civilization's infrastructure than the way that the people lived. We know that they had huge buildings like pyramids and complex irrigation systems, but what makes this so bizarre is the fact that there's no evidence of any pottery in the civilization which suggests that they don't know how to use it. How are you going to build a whole pyramid but struggle to make a pot? I don't get it. There is also evidence that these people worship some kind of deity, but again, no one knows what form this deity took. Now here's where the mystery really comes in. No one knows what happened to the Norte Chico civilization. The settlements were abandoned sometime around 1800 BC, but no one really knows why. There's no evidence of any kind of warfare, and there were no natural disasters to cause them to flee their homes. The people just kind of disappeared, and no one has been able to piece together the puzzle, so we may never know. And coming in at number one, the Greek civilization. The Antikythera mechanism is the world's oldest analog computer. It would keep track of the cosmos, and to this day we're trying to figure out the exact purpose of it or how it was built. But what we do know is that one of those dials in there was meant to keep track of the Olympics. That's how important this event was. Thanks to the ancient Greeks, now we get to see dudes huck and shot puts at people. It's great. The ancient Greek civilization thrived in Greece around 500 BC to 2700 BC. The rich history of ancient Greeks spans such a long time that we've divided their time into periods, like the Archaic, Hellenistic, and Classical period. Their wine was so good that they had a wine god in the pantheon. God Dionysus. What an OG. It was deemed a hubris for Greeks to get intoxicated, so they would also add water to their wine. That way they could keep the party going all night, of course, but actually it was done so nobody became violent. Only God Dionysus would drink wine straight out. That's pretty, pretty hardcore. If inventing the Olympics wasn't badass enough, they also used stones instead of toilet paper. So I'll let you imagine that in your head. We'll leave on that note. That's a nice pretty image to finish on. 